everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build a Contact Us page using the Gutenberg Block Editor. I'm also going to be talking about what goes into a good Contact Us page and what's some of the things that you should look out for when you're starting to build your own. Alright guys, so let's jump right into this. Uh, we're going to be building a Contact Us page using only the Block Editor. Now for reference, this website that I'm building it on is using the Genesis sample theme. I haven't made any modifications. And it has the Genesis Pro plugin, which is very similar to Atomic Blocks. If you wish to install those, I'll include the links to them below. The other note is uh, I am using for my contact form, the Jetpack forms. You are able to use whether any real plugin you want. I'll show you how to add the short codes to, for, from them. But for the sake of this video, I'll be using the Jetpack forms for the basic Contact Us page. So one thing that I like about uh, Contact Us pages is they can be relatively simple and they can communicate a lot of information. So right here I have Tune pulled up, Tune.com. I don't use their service and I have no relation to them, but I like their Contact Us page. It's very simple. You have the key information you need on your left-hand side and on the right-hand side you have the contact page. The advantage of this method is because you're providing information on the left-hand side of the screen, the user is able to navigate to different pages that are similar to the Contact Us page, but they may not be exactly what they're looking for. For instance, it says uh, search open positions. Well, that would typically be on a careers page. Users may reach out onto the Contact Us page. And the structure of your Contact Us page is going to depend a lot on your business. If you're running a very simple business uh, where you have only maybe a single office location, another good one is Screaming Frog. They have a very nice looking Contact Us page that you can also look to emulate. They have one bit of functionality that I'm not that big of a fan of, but I will show you how to integrate it because I always get asked about it. And that is the Google Maps form. The reason I'm not a big fan of Google Maps forms is because they're quite slow especially on mobile devices, even if you lazy load them, because that's just pushing it off until after the user gets them into the viewport. But the bigger issue is they don't really provide any value. The user's not getting any real value from having this, pay, this little widget over here that's their business on a map, and I can't even do much besides control plus scroll to zoom in and um, that's about it. There's not any real value here. It's just a nice way of adding something to the page. You can do all of this using the default block editor in WordPress. You can make a very simple contact us page that is still very attractive. I'll even show you how to set up a nice looking cover photo. Uh, I've imported some random demo data for the sake of this video, but it's something in a uh, random image, random images. So just keep that in mind. You'll use whatever images you're most comfortable with. So to start, you're just going to go, go to pages, add new. And there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, if you're using Genesis Pro, there are predefined sections that you could add. Uh, sections in Genesis Pro are basically just a pre-built style of blocks and you basically just replace it with your text. They do have one for contact information. They actually have quite a few depending on your general needs. Um, the one I would probably choose is the contact info and map option, but keep in mind that that doesn't have a spot for a contact form. You would probably just add it immediately afterwards and maybe add a cover photo. Um, but I'll show you how to make one from scratch that's reasonable and allows you to still have an appealing looking page. So with the default block editor, you do gain access to a very powerful block called the cover block. This is a big image, for the lack of a better word, that you choose to display on the page. And this is just one of the random images that I had imported. It's uh, large enough to fit the space. And what's great about the cover block is it actually contains additional blocks. So there is the paragraph block that it starts with. This is meant for random bits of text, but we're going to convert this to a heading because I'm assuming that you want your header, contact us, to not be just slapped onto the page. You want it to be in a header. Most people tend to want to do this. One advantage of the Genesis framework is you're able to disable titles on a per page basis, which I will also do. But for this area, I'm going to align center and you're going to see why I'm doing this later. And I'm going to just type in contact us. So we added our contact us header and we're going to copy a bit of a blurb. 
Uh, because I don't have any ready-made text to go here, I'm just gonna copy a sub-paragraph right here uh, for what Screaming Frog does. And I'm going to align this to the center as well. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like, uh, but real quick, the layout type for Genesis, I'm also gonna set it to full width and the title, just so that way it's a little bit more realistic, like if you were using Elementor, so keep that in mind. And we're gonna go ahead and click preview. When we preview it, it's going to look very ugly. As you can see, it's just slapped in the middle of the page. It's using fixed containers and it doesn't look very appealing. The cover block is one of the few blocks though that has the ability to go wide width and full width. So wide width is, stretches it slightly outside the bounds of the container. So by default, your theme sets a container size for what you can put in the body area as a max width. Wide width extends it a little bit. So as you can see, it is wider now and it looks more appealing. The other one is full width. Full width is typically what you would associate with with a cover photo. And as you can see, it looks appealing. It looks great. Um, you know, the text and the image are not my own and they're just randomly placed on there, but whatever text and image you wish to put, or if you just wanna have contact us as the header, you're able to do that. Uh, one question I know I will get is, how do you convert the heading type from heading two to heading one from an SEO perspective? All you have to do is click here where it says heading two, uh, and you'll get this little box over here underneath the cog, and you'll click heading one. And that's how you can easily modify your text output. So now we need to deal with the next issue, which is going to be adding the contact form and adding the text. You can do this a couple of ways. Number one, you can either do them in a column, so your form will be like over here, and your text can be over here. You can also just use a single layout, so you use 100% of a full width area, you use the contact form, and then you include your text up above. There's a number of ways you can approach it. We're gonna be trying to get a similar layout to these two pages though, just so that way you can get a nice look at what you can do. So these guys have a let's start a conversation subheading, whereas Screaming Frog does not. No matter which method you choose, it's important to use a spacer element. Most themes do not add spacing between Gutenberg blocks yet by default. So this will basically be run right up against the image if I don't add a spacer. A spacer element can be easily added just by clicking on the block and then selecting the item spacer. Now the spacer is a transparent chunk of space. It effectively has no output. The gray image you just see is the plugin showing you how big the dimensions is. So as you can see, it's 100 pixels. If I set it to 1000 pixels, now it gets really large. The typical spacing is going to depend on your design and how much white space you wanna use. But one thing I wanna say is don't go overboard. You don't need a very large amount of white space here. Uh, it's something like 25 or 50 in that range is a good amount. I'm going to do 25 personally, but that's just my style here. So now we need to figure out how to do uh, do the split column. We're gonna have the contact form on our left hand side of the screen and we're gonna have the general information on the right hand side. You can do either or. So we're gonna have to talk about one important detail though and that is the columns block. WordPress has a native columns block which is vastly inferior to that in the atomic blocks or in the Genesis Pro plugin. The reason I say that is because while columns support wide width and full width, they do not support the ability for you to add padding and margins or to declare an interior space limit. So what that means is, and I'm gonna show you the difference between these two and why you either wanna use Atomic Blocks or Genesis Pro, because you're gonna eventually get limited in the what you could do without adding code. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add the columns block. And this is just the standard columns block. As you can see, I have advanced columns. That's from Genesis Pro. The standard columns block is in WordPress core. We're gonna be doing a 50-50 uh, split, so a two column layout. And if you're looking to add your forms, you can do so with the short code widget right here. You click this, it's gonna ask you to write your short code, just paste in whatever they gave you and it will work just fine here. But we need to add the forms that Jetpack included. Now, Jetpack forms are great because they have a couple of pre-made ones. The contact form is fine, it just needs a couple more items. If you're a small business, you probably wanna collect more than just the name, email, and message. You probably wanna be able to get the phone number, for instance. 
Um, your phone number will probably go after the email, so we can click on the email block and click insert after. Once we do that, we can click the plus sign and we can select what we want. So if I want the phone number, I'll just click on uh, this first one. Whoop. What is going on with my mouse? There you go, buddy. So you go ahead and you click and this will allow you to collect phone numbers. If you need to make any of these items required, just click the star and then I'll make it required to where they have to submit the data. If you also need to collect an address information, which you probably need to do if you're selling an at-home service or you have to deliver something or you just need their information for validation purposes, the easiest way I find to do this with the con uh, contact form in Jetpack is to answer it just like we did before. I'm gonna insert it after. And then I just used the text option. The reason I use the text option is because it's only one line. If you use the uh, larger message option, it's gonna look like this and it's going to be very large. And we just rename it to something like address. Uh, I'm not gonna make this required, but I will make the phone number required just for my own preference. If you wanna modify the way that the button looks, you can do that by coming down here. One thing to keep in mind is that the button will by default have um, some colors that you'll see on the front end. Depending on your theme, in the case of this one, you do need to manually specify these colors here. So for instance, so the text color, I'm gonna set it to white. Even though on the back end it does show it, the reason that I'm manually specifying it is because otherwise the CSS from the theme could easily override it. If I don't do that, what will happen is I'll get a black button with white text because this, that is the native styling in the Genesis sample theme. So as you can see, very basic contact form. We're now also going to add ourselves the general text information. So this is just gonna be any phone number you may have. Your email addresses is very important. You should add your email addresses, so especially because when you add your email address, it allows the user to just take it into their email client as opposed to filling out a form. And it, sometimes it's just better for them to send you information. Otherwise, what ends up happening is the user will go to your contact form They'll fill it out and it may not be an adequate representation of what they need, especially because most email plugins tend to just send a generic subject line. And so you'll want to specify the information. Uh, for the sake of this though, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this text right here on the, on the Tunes website. Since it already has all the data that I need, you're gonna wanna put in your own information using the text block. So what you'll do is you'll just find a uh, paragraph and you can paste all that nice information in there. What's great is if you're already using it as the existing solution, you can paste it right in and the block editor should configure it to appear reasonable. One thing I am going to say, and I do see this quite often, is users want to be able to link their telephone information. Uh, blinking telephone numbers can be useful for mobile devices. You're gonna have to add it via a element. Um, by ju you're just gonna have to find whatever number you're wanting to link to, and you're gonna have to add a URL called, uh, I'll put a link to the format, I'll just put it in the description actually, just a, a blurb on how to link a telephone number. But if you wanna add it, you'll just um, find whatever text, so you wrote down your phone number as like, Five 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 five. I'll just show you real quick. Oop, too many digits. All right. So we went ahead. We added our phone number. If you want to email, um, not email. You want to link to it. You'll just go tell t e l the colon. If you're in the United States, you don't need to add plus one because that's typically the default anyways. If you're having an international user base though, you probably should add the plus one. And then you just add the digits as they were. So 555, 555, 5555. You link, and now if they're on a mobile device, their phone will try to call that number when they tap it. Uh, very simple and easy to integrate. I'll also just include that markup down below so that way you can just put it in with your own digits. Uh, I'm gonna take it out though because I obviously don't need it on this contact form. So now I'm gonna show you what this looks like. We've added a basic header, we've added our contact form, and we have the general information on the right. Now, most of you are probably going to point out one important detail. This looks cramped, and that is because of the theme natively. 
Now, because we're using the block editor, we can do exactly what we did for the cover photo. We can extend the width of the columns to be wide width or full width. There is a downside though that I mentioned prior with the native columns block, and that is because the native columns block doesn't include a way to set the interior max width. So it's gonna stretch the content all the way. So we're, I'm gonna show you this and it's not very appealing to look at. The easiest way to figure out how to get to select the main columns is if you check right in the middle between the two and then it'll open up this section that you select the main outdoor columns. You can set it to wide width. When you set it to wide width, it's going to extend it a little bit and it does look a little bit better. Most people would probably call this good. Some people though may want it a little bit wider and if you go full width, this is where you run into the issue. Now it's going to look very wide because there's no interior padding and the native columns block does not add a way for you to set that. You're not able to set an interior width, you have to use CSS. That is a shortcoming of the columns block in my opinion. A lot of blocks in the current existing block editor just lack a way to modify some of the finer details, especially because themes aren't supporting the block editor fully and because themes tend to apply their own styling, they have to work out the difference between their theme styling and Gutenberg and it's just causing headache. Now, I'm gonna quickly show you how to add the Google Map Embed just so that you can see what it looks like when it has enough space. However, Atomic Blocks and Genesis Pro have a nice block to deal with that, which is to be expected. But if you wanna add a Google Map for your business, the easiest way is honestly to just look up your business name. So I'm gonna look up the Screaming Frog one because uh, for the sake of simplicity, you're gonna to go to the Maps section and it's gonna open up Google Maps. Then you're gonna to go to Share, you're going to go to the Embed option and you're gonna copy the HTML. You might be wondering, well, why don't I just use Google Maps API and install a plugin? When you use the Google Maps API, the JavaScript is automatically fetched. All the JS, all the images, everything is fetched immediately on load. Oftentimes those plugins also add the Google Maps API script on every single page, whether they're needed or not. The issue with that implementation though is it's bad for performance, quite frankly, and it doesn't really provide a lot of value in the first place because most of the time users are integrating it via the via the plugin and they're just adding their name with a little bit of an icon just like the Screaming Frog website. That is useless to the end user. It's just not very useful. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to go ahead and go to the end of our section over here. We're gonna hit enter and we're gonna click HTML. The reason we're using HTML is so that we can embed our iframe here. Now, where it says width of 600, if you want it to automatically scale to the size of the container, this is useful for mobile too, so that way it doesn't need to stretch outside of the container or it doesn't fit correctly. You can set a width of 100%. That will automatically scale it to the container that you're in. You can also set the height to whatever you wish. I'm gonna set it to 400. And now I'm gonna show you what this looks like before we look at the atomic blocks version of the column block to show you what you can do. As you can see, it's filled the area quite nicely. It looks very nice and it doesn't feel so odd, but we can do better. We do not need to use the standard columns block and I'm gonna show you now how to use atomic blocks. So one thing we can do real quick is we can add, we can uh, transform our, our existing block into a group block, but we're not gonna bother. What we're gonna do instead real quick is uh, insert something right above this block and that's gonna be our new block, our new columns block from the atomic blocks. Whoa, I misspelled it. Advanced columns. Advanced columns are very nice. I get along with them very well because they're so easy to use and they're just amazing. So columns 50-50. Now, we have the columns 50-50 and they look basically exactly the same as the others. So you might be wondering, well, what's the difference? Well, we can set it to the aligned center, the wide width or the full width. We're gonna set the column to the wide width, but we can now set a column interior max width. This sets the maximum width that the, can, the items within the column can extend to. So before we had wide width and full width, but now I can have the interior max width of those items set to 1200. As you can see, the text moved from the outside over here to a little bit on the inside. And this is very advantageous to us because now we have the ability 
to quite easily manipulate our entire form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another contact form just so that we can see. I'm not going to bother adding the same items and I'm going to copy all the blocks that were down here because I just want to give you guys a good representation of why you should be looking at using Atomic Blocks or Genesis Pro. So we've added the exact same title and text and everything. The only thing I didn't do was uh, add the same fields back because frankly, it doesn't matter. But now we're going to see what it looks like. And now, as you can see, while the item is here, they're both set to full width, but the spacing is much better. Ignore this button over here. That's what I mentioned would happen if you didn't specify it. But everything else is basically the exactly the same. And it just looks much better because when you have set the interior max width to 1200 pixels, you can set it to something larger, but 1200 is typically the general sweet spot for desktop devices, mostly because when you're working on um, like 13 inch laptops, they, they don't scale very well and they're becoming very common because thin and light laptops are seeing wider adoption. But the interior max with the 1200 looks visually appealing. It fits the map correctly at the full resolution that we expected, you know, the full width that we expected, and it just fits the size much better. I wish the standard blocks did this, but they do not. What we're gonna do is now I'm just gonna take this out so that we can all see what it finally looks like. And this is why I recommend using atomic blocks. As you can see, we built a general contact page. I'm gonna add some more fields here so that way we just fill it out because it's gonna bother me seeing that the contact form is shorter than the details on the right. It's very stylish and it's super simple and it does, didn't require any plugins except for the atomic blocks that I already had installed. And it's gonna be much faster than using something like Elementor to build these kind of pages because it doesn't have to load any JavaScript outside of the Google Map Embed that's I'm gonna call it optional, even though many people like to include them. And what's great is if you're using the default Jetpack forms, you don't have to go out and fetch another plugin to add your forms and you get a very stylish looking contact page. I, I really wanna showcase what you can do with the block editor on this channel, specifically with the Genesis theme because my website was built on the Genesis framework and it was built using atomic blocks. And there is a lot of power in the block editor, but it has to be extended upon it with another plugin, whether that's the ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg or cadence blocks or whatever you choose. If you have a good foundation with your framework and you just combine it with something like atomic blocks or Genesis Pro or cadence or ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg or insert new block pack that's coming out next week here, you're gonna be fine. And this looks great. There's nothing confusing. All my re contact information is readily available. It's got a map for those who care about that. Still don't know why that's always added, but it is. And it looks great. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to ask in the comments below. If you'd like to see more videos about using the block editor to build pages as opposed to something like Elementor or any specific page builder, please feel free to ask it in the comments below and give suggestions. Otherwise, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.